Hey, good morning everyone. This is Aaron. Welcome back to the channel. This is part three of the video series on EPM data pipeline. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to invoke the data pipeline using REST APIs, uh, specifically from the Groovy business rule. So in the last two videos, we looked at creating the pipeline and also I explained how to create pipeline for cross-board file operations. So if you haven't watched those videos, make sure to check those out. I'll leave a link to those videos in the description of this video. So a little bit of explanation on, on the pipeline itself. So we have four stages, unzipping a file, copying a file, moving the file, and then deleting the files. For all of this to work, we have to first create a, a connection in EPM. Uh, we have to create uh, three global variables. Again, these corresponds to the uh, custom variables that we have defined in the pipeline. And last uh, but not least, we define or create the Groovy business rule to invoke the REST API. All right, so let's get into it. Um, so I'm logged into the system. Let's take a look at the data pipeline first. All right, so we have four stages here, unzip, um, copy, move, and delete files. The pipeline code is important because that's what we're gonna use in the REST API. And if you look at the variables, we have three different variables, zip file name, CSV file name, and new file name. Again, we will create in Calc Manager, we'll go ahead and create three global variables to pass values to these custom variables in data pipeline. So when we get there, I'll explain a little bit more about that. Cancel. So the first thing, let's go ahead and create a connection. So go back into homepage, tools, connections, and click on create, other web service provider, give a name, URL. So I've, I've written a blog about this. So if you guys are interested, I'll leave a link to that. Um, I'm just going to copy the URL structure from there. Copy and paste. And the APA version is V1. Make sure the version is uh, capital V and 1, not small V and 1, because if you do that, the REST API uh, is not going to work. So this is the documentation from Oracle. I'll leave a link to this as well in the video description. Uh, this just talks about the URL structure here. You can see that. And you'll see that the content type is application slash JSON. Also gives you a sample payload that you can use while invoking the REST API. And you'll see the API version, which is V1. All right. So now let's go back into the application. Now you have to give a uh, username and password, again, a user with service administrator access. Before you do anything, let's also go into show advanced options and let's set the header. So this is setting the content type, application slash JSON. I'm just gonna paste the password one more time and click on save and close. All right, so we have created the connection. Now let's go ahead and create the variables, global variables. So I'm going to create and manage rules. We have to create the variables. So let's go into variables, expand EPM Cloud, click on global. We'll go ahead and create new. All right, so I have the code ready. I'm just gonna copy the variable names from there, zip file name. Is this RRTP? Yes. Zip file. All right. And type is string. So I'm going to click on save and create two more CSV file name. All right. Let's save. And one more. Again, you can name it uh, whatever you want. This just makes it easy for me to map it to the variables that we have defined for the pipeline. All right, so let's see the variables here. All right, so we have three variables here. Now let's take a look at the data pipeline variables. So you have three variables, zip file name, CSV file name, and new file name. And in the Calc Manager Variable Designer, we have defined three global variables, zip file name, 
CSV file name and new file name. All right, so it just corresponds to the variables that we have defined in the pipeline. All right, so once we are done with that, let's go on and create the rule. So we are going to use this as the rule name. All right, there you go. Now, as always, first thing, change this to edit script and change the type from calc script to groovy script. All right, so I have the code ready. I'm just going to copy and paste it here, and then I'll explain each of the lines. So this is us defining the runtime prompts. So we defined the variables here, right? So we defined all these three variables. And while invoking the groovy business rule, we want this to be prompted, and the user will enter the uh, values for these prompts, and that's what I'm going to use to pass to the uh, pipeline. All right. The next thing is I, I'm just going to uh, create like a few variables to hold these values. So this just corresponds to the zip file name, CSV file name, new file name. And uh, I like to print out values. So when you run the uh, business rule and you go to app uh, jobs and you open up the job, you can see these different values. So it it's make, makes it easy for you to debug. All right. So I also like to print the payload that we pass, right? So this is the payload. Uh, basically, <clears throat> this gets converted into a JSON format, and um, this is what gets passed to the pipeline itself. But, but what basically that what it does is, um, if you look at the documentation, you will see that you have to pass the job name, which is the pipeline code, the job type, which is pipeline, and the different variables that you have that you have defined. So for us, the job name is file. OPEX, that's because if I look at the details, you'll see that the pipeline code is file OPEX. Um, and that's what we're going to pass. The pipeline code is what is passed to the job name, not the name of the pipeline. And the job type is pipeline and then the different variables. So we have three variables here, um, zip file name, CSV file name, new file name. And these are mandatory variables. So I have I, we need to pass those variables and they don't have default values, right? So here, these three uh, variables don't have default values. So we have to pass a value to these variables, otherwise it's going to complain. Now, there are two, three other variables here. These are out of the box default. Um, these are out of the box variables, send mail, send to and attach logs. Now, send to is not a required parameter uh, or variable. So I have not included that. I've also not included send mail and attach logs. That's because they do have default value. So if I don't pass a value, it's going to take the default value of no uh, here, right? So um, all I need is to pass these three required variables and any variable that don't have a default value or if you want to pass some other value other than the default value for the uh, variables. And this is again to print out how the payload looks. Okay, so, all right, first let's just deploy this and see how it looks. So I'm gonna, so when you click on save, um, it's gonna ask you for values for these um, variables. And conveniently I have those available. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it here. So this is CSV file name, right? And zip file name, so zip file name uh, CSV file name, and I'm just gonna give uh, this as the value to the new file. Name. All right, I'm gonna click apply values to the rule. Click OK. All right. Now you can see that uh, we have the variables available or runtime prompts available here. I'm just gonna click on zip file name and move it out. So kind of makes sense. You pass the zip file name, then the CSV file name, and the new file name, all right? So let's uh, save it one more time. All right, now I'm gonna deploy this, because if you don't deploy, it's gonna sometimes complain about um, variables not being defined. All right, deployment was successful. Now I can run it from here, so let's just run it. So this looks good.
All right, so the rule ran without any errors. Now let's go back into the instance. So we haven't invoked the pipeline yet, but I just want to take a look at jobs and show you why it's important to pass the, or print out the different um, log messages. So here you can see that it was able to read the zip file name, CSV file name, new file name. So the values are coming correctly. And this is the payload that will be passed to the pipeline, right? So you have job name, job type, zip file name, uh, CSV file name, and the new file name, all right? And if I look at the payload here, you see that that's how it is supposed to be passed, right? So just making sure that the payload is coming correctly. So that's how I printed it. Again, uh, it, it helps you when you're trying to debug um, of this rule. All right, so the next thing is to invoke the REST API using the connection. Now, I'm gonna copy and paste it here. All right, so here you'll see that line number 19, we're using the connection that we created, right? So let's go back into the instance, take a look at the connection itself. So we have connections and we have created the connection by the name pipeline. So that's what we have used, get connection pipeline. And this is a post method. So if I look at here in the documentation, you see that method is post. It's not get, it's post. So, all right, so we're gonna use post. And then we have to post the, um, then we have to pass the payload. So we have already printed the payload. We know it's, it's good. Um, so this should be good. And then this is just this entire uh, line 19 to 23 is invoking the data pipeline REST API, all right? Now I'm just gonna print out some of the things. So this is basically uh, the body of the uh, response. So once you invoke the REST API, you get a response. This just uh, prints the body, the status, and the status text, okay? So if we did everything right, this should be working without any issues. So let's take a, take a look. deploy all right first thing I want to make sure is that we have the data file uploaded in the system right now again you can improve this rest API to include more checks and error handling and stuff like that I have not uh, maybe I'll make something later so we have the zip file loaded now let's go ahead and run the business rule all right, so zip file name is good. CSV file name is good. Uh, I'm just gonna change this to December 20, 2023, right? All right, Thanks. looks good. Click on okay. Now, fingers crossed, hopefully this works fine. Then I can publish the video. All right, seems like it ran, right? So I'm just gonna go back into jobs. And this is our business rule. All right, so these are the file names that we passed. Everything looks good. Uh, this is just the payload, right? And this is the um, link to the job itself. Job ID is 43, status is running, and the response from the REST API call is that it was okay, there, there, there were no errors, right? So if everything went well, we can go to the inbox, outbox directory. Uh, you see that the file is not there, so it has been deleted. Now if we go to data exchange, go to actions, go to file browser, inbox, you should see the CSV file here, so that worked fine. I can also look at the pipeline process details. So you should see process ID 43. This is what we saw in the log file. The job ID was 43, so it was invoked. If I look at the log file, this is the log file. You can see uh, it completed the start uh, unzip stage, copy stage, move stage and delete file stage, 
All right, so everything worked fine. Um, we were able to invoke the EPM data pipeline using REST API from the Groovy business rule. All right, so going back into the business rule, I'll try to maybe explain one more time. So we defined the uh, runtime prompts. These runtime prompts uses the global variables we defined. And then this is just printing out all of those uh, values. Uh, we also printed out the payload. And this is where we are invoking the REST API. It uses the connection that we created. And then the payload gets passed here. Uh, we are passing three variables uh, in the payload zip file name, CSV file name, and new file name, because these are mandatory and they don't have default values. Uh, and so we are passing them uh, in the payload. And then this section is just printing out the response from the REST API. Now you can um, make it better. You can also check the status of the pipeline and then print out message based on how the pipeline uh, um, you know, succeeded or whether the pipeline failed. You can also include additional validation to check if the file exists in the inbox outbox directory, things like that. But that's maybe for another video or another blog. All right, hopefully this helped you. Uh, this is a pretty simple groovy business tool to invoke the EPM data pipeline. Now you can also invoke uh, you know, any other REST API using similar method, but this is just showing you that you can use groovy to invoke a REST API, specifically in this case, invoking REST API for data pipeline. All right, uh, I think this would be the last video for the year. I thank you all for supporting me and watching my videos and you know liking and, and, and commenting on those videos. Um, so hopefully the new year, I have uh, much more uh, videos and content for you guys. All right, um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and Happy New Year to everyone. And uh, hit me up if you have any questions and uh, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. All right, that is all I had. I'll talk to you all in the next one. Peace.